Hey guys, James again with TFB TV, and I got a couple of good looking ladies here with me today. I've got the Galil Ace in 76239. I've got the Mini 30 in 76239. And then behind the camera, I've got a Yugo M70 AK, also, of course, in 76239. Now, the AK videos have been really popular lately. You guys won't stop watching the Mini videos, so I figured why not keep giving you what you want. Let's do a little AK versus Mini 30 versus the Galil Accuracy Showdown. Here you have the Ruger Mini 30 Tactical and Stainless at 7.6239. It's got a threaded barrel. The Ruger Mini 14 was designed and built by Ruger in the late 60s, produced in the early 70s. It was named the Mini 14 because of its resemblance to the M14. Similarly, it works kind of like an M1 Garand. Early models of this gun were plagued with inaccuracy issues. It wasn't until the 580 series, that is the serial numbers beginning with 580 and higher, that the gun was accurized. So if you have anything with a serial number starting with 580 dash or higher, you're good to go. If not, you could always spray and pray. I'm a big fan of the Mini. I think it's a very handsome gun. Ruger has great warranty service. Although I gotta say they are a bit pricey. I think this is about 750 or $800 for the stainless tactical model with the flash hider and the threaded barrel. Next up, we've got the Galil Ace. The Galil Ace is the next generation of the Israeli Galil that was introduced in the late 60s and early 70s. This is basically a third generation AK. You had, of course, the AK-47. And during the Six Days War in Israel, the Israelis noticed that their Belgian FALs weren't performing as well as the AK-47s out in the battlefield. So they decided to lift a few things from the AK and make their own rifle, the Galil. So the original Galil in the 70s was a little bit heavier than this model. Not as modular, but it took a lot of design cues from the AK. The Galil Ace that I have here today this uses a cold hammer forged barrel, just like most AKs. It uses a long stroke gas piston system with a rotating bolt, just like most AKs. It's got the same paddle release, just like most AKs. And it takes AK-47 magazines and shoots 7.62-39, just like most AKs. However, the Galil Ace has a few design improvements. First, it's got a sturdier top mount for your scope or any optic that you want to put on here. It's also got a one-piece dovetailed gas tube. Now, why does that make that big of a difference? The gas piston, this is a long stroke gas piston system. What that means is there is a huge gas piston in this gas tube that's attached to this bolt carrier group. And as this bolt carrier group moves, you've got this piston jostling around inside that gas tube. So they figured make the gas tube a separate component, a one piece separate component uh, with minimum contact to the barrel and the receiver. That way you get less harmonic distortion. So what I mean by harmonics, when you shoot a gun, the barrel actually kind of whips if you look at it in slow motion. And you know what makes that worse? A huge chunk of metal on top of the barrel, rattling the barrel around whenever you're firing. So. IWI, whenever they designed the Galil Ace, they said, look, we're gonna make this as separate a component as we can in order to minimize the effect of the gas piston moving during the firing sequence, and they did an excellent job. I've heard reports of people getting sub MOA out of these guns with the right kind of ammo. This is perhaps one of the most sophisticated AK rifles ever created, if not the most sophisticated. It is a true 21st century battle rifle. Its components are still primarily made in Israel. They're imported to IWI in the United States. It's got some of the tightest tolerances that I have seen on a combat rifle and fit and finish is really incredible. In any event, MSRP on these guys is around 1800 bucks. I think you can buy them for around 1500 bucks. And that sounds like a lot of money. In fact, you could buy the Yugo that I'm using and the Mini 30 that I'm using today for the price of one of these. But in my opinion, you're just not getting the same thing from the Yugo or from the Mini 30 as you're getting in the Galil. And finally, I've got the Serbian or more commonly referred to as the Yugo M70 AK pattern rifle. I think these are great derivatives of the AK design, even if they don't have chrome lined bores. But for the most part, they're pretty well put together. They're very functional. 
and they can be pretty accurate. It's not the most accurate AK I own. I would say that that might be my Saiga SGL21, which I've managed to shoot sub two inch groups with, but I think this is a pretty good representative for today because the SGL21s, I mean, they're running over $1,000. You can pick this guy up for around 600 bucks. It's got the milled one and a half millimeter receiver, so it's more rigid than your typical stamped AK or your regular one millimeter receiver AK. So I've managed to squeeze some pretty good groups out of what is functionally a surplus AK-47. So I'm excited to see how this stacks up today against its more expensive counterparts. Remember, this one is about $150 to $200 less, sometimes $300 less than the Mini 30 Tactical, and it's like a third of the price of the Galil Ace. So I can't wait to see how it holds up. Anyways, let's go hit the 100 yard range and check it out. Got my Mini 14, got my Caldwell Tack driver, got my water, Got my Fioki ammo. All right, I think we're good to go. First up is the Ruger Mini 30 in 76239. This is the 76239 version of the Ruger Mini 14. I've shot some pretty good, some sub two MOA, I think approaching one MOA groups with a Mini 14. That's the post 580 series. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the Fioki 123 grain, brass case ammunition, compliments of my buddies at Ventura Munitions. Let's give it a shot, couple five round groups. This week the best group we shot out of the Mini 30 was two and a half inches. Last week I squeezed some two inch groups off of the bean bag, but I gotta say this, every time I shoot a Mini people say, yeah, the groups tend to open up whenever it warms up. And, and I gotta say, I've noticed that. So look at the last group that I shot today. I mean, I hope I'm just crazy or wrong because I mean, it kind of sucks, but look at this. This is the last five round group that I shot while the barrel was hot. I mean, it was really hot, but it didn't take that long to get there. I mean, that is, a almost a six inch group that is a 5.8 inch group after the barrel got warm i mean i hope that's wrong and if you maybe if there was a flyer there i mean even so that's about 3.1 inches so just food for thought all right next up the notorious galil ace this one's going to be a little bit tricky since the rear sight kind of gets in the way of the scope. And for what it's worth, you guys might want to know what scope I'm using. This is the, the new Bushnell Engage 3 to 12X, 30 millimeter tube. I gotta say, Bushnell's a sponsor of the program. They sent this to me, and I've received Bushnell scopes before that I've been kind of uh, on. I actually love this one. It's got locking turrets, so you've got the external turrets. You don't need any tools to adjust it, and it's got a focus wheel on the left-hand side. So I really like it a lot. It's a little tough to find your eye relief at 12X, but other than that, it's pretty dang good and pretty clear. Been shooting some pretty decent groups with it so far today. So the Glial had a number of insanely tight groups for an AK derivative. The one you're looking at here is about 1.9 inches across with a little three shot group that's less than 0.5 inches, about 0.45 inches. Diverting our attention over here to the immediate, the group shot immediately after, that is 1.9 inches. So two 1.9 inch groups then we got kind of this wonky cross-shaped group right here, 1.9 inches. So I think it's pretty safe to conclude that the Galil is a sub-2 MOA gun. We just knocked out four groups that were about two inches. Okay, last but certainly not least, the Yugo M70.
All right, let's see how it did. Most of the group's right around three inches, and the best one we picked up, now that's a staple, a whole staple. The best one we picked up looked like, no, about 2.5 inches. Yeah, I mean, that's a two and a half inch group. That's pretty good out of the notepad. Now announcing your new heavyweight 76239 champion, the Galil Ace in 76239. As I said, IWI really modernized the AK platform with the Galil Ace. This is a very sophisticated gun, very tight tolerances, yet very reliable. Has a bunch of really neat upgrades, including if you're a righty, you know, you like it a lot better having that charging handle on the left hand side of the gun. It's got that dust cover you see right there a little slab of metal that covers the cutout for the charging handle it's got a very generous paddle mag release very easy to insert your mags lighter weight with the polymer lower that houses the pistol grip the trigger guard and the magazine well and as i mentioned earlier you have the one piece gas tube that is dovetailed into the receiver really prevents the gas piston from imparting too much energy on the barrel during the firing sequence the barrel is a cold hammer forged barrel so wow all of that put together this gun shot the best groups of the day shooting several sub 2 moa groups under two inches at 100 yards very impressive but remember this guys this gun cost about fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars street price so that said you could buy a ruger and an opap for the price of this gun and have enough money left over to buy a case of ammunition for it. I don't want to take away from the Galil's accomplishment because that is pretty darn impressive. To be able to squeeze out 1.9 inch groups with a long stroke piston AK design rifle. In any event, I want to say thank you so much to Ventura Munitions. They sent us all the ammo that I used in this test today. I also want to say thank you to our newest sponsor, Blue Alpha Gear. They make the best belts hands down in the country and if you guys want to win one go to patreon.com slash tfbtv sign up we're giving away two a month until we decide to stop but thanks most of all to you guys for watching as usual you know i love you i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you next week